Da, 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 da. Mario is getting his own movie, so I'm gonna capitalize on this momentous occasion and try to make my own Mario fan game. First, I found this sprite sheet of the original Mario animations, and they're super tiny because the NES couldn't handle big image files. But remaking the original Super Mario Bros. with pixel art would be kind of boring and probably wouldn't make a very fun video. So instead, I'm gonna be drawing everything in Photoshop with a mouse. A mamma mia. And before I start, I want to make it really clear that I do not own any of the rights to these original assets. They all come from Nintendo, and I'm just making a fan game, okay? I'm just a little guy in the middle of Australia. Ba -ba 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 I drew this Mario sprite real quick and put together a quick character controller in Unity, but as you can see, there are no animations, and so it looks kind of like some weird levitating Italian man. The original game has three different sprites for the run cycle, so I drew these in Photoshop and made it flick between these sprites to create the idea of running. The way this works is whenever you're moving horizontally, an invisible timer begins to count up. When it reaches the end, Mario flips to the next sprite in the cycle and the timer is set back to the start so it can happen all over again. This is looking pretty cool, but I'm using an Epic Gamer PC with like 16 triglycerides of RAM, so there's a lot more I can do with it to make it look better when comparing it against this old piece of nostalgic wonderfulness. Something that I love in video games is Squeesh, especially in Celeste for example. It makes it feel super juicy and fun to play. What happens here is that the X scale decreases and the Y scale increases for jumping and then the opposite for landing. A neat little detail that I added is that the landing effect is more noticeable the faster Mario is falling when he hits the ground, and this is really accurate to real life. No, I will not elaborate on how I know this. Alright, there's some basic platformer stuff now, but it's still pretty boring. Particles. Visual effects really weren't able to be rendered on the NES, so I added some dust particles to Mario's movement to make it feel that bit more dynamic. On the topic of graphics, I replicated the decorations for the background, and I think they look super cute. Something that I found out while doing this is that the bush and cloud sprites are suspiciously similar, probably for storage purposes, but I thought I may as well point it out because it's pretty interesting. Now, this doesn't quite feel like a Mario game yet, so I wanted to add some more iconic features. Firstly, coins. Pretty simple. Just had to draw it at different stages to look like it was spinning, and it only vaguely looks like a potato, so that's pretty good. And when Mario collides with it, it does this little animation with some particle effects. Brick and question blocks were next, and they are a big part of the Mario environment. They were super easy to make, and they worked really well, except they didn't, and I hate everything. Drawing them wasn't too much of an issue, but the way that Mario collides with them is a little bit funky. When he hits the brick blocks from underneath, they bounce up a little bit, and to do this, I made Mario send a message to whatever block he hit. For the bricks, they'll just bounce up, and uh, yes. The question blocks are a little bit spicy though. They can either hold a coin like this, or a mushroom, which I haven't added yet, so let's do that. The mush mush was a little bit more difficult to draw because of its shape, but I think it turned out pretty okay. I put it in the game and wrote a little script to move it to the right, and whenever it encounters a wall, it'll simply make its move speed negative to move in the other direction. But that's only half of it, because when Mario touches the mushroom, he needs to get big. Just like small Mario, tall Mario has a selection of running sprites, as well as ones for jumping and standing. And I didn't have to change the code a whole lot, just instead of Mario looking like this, he looks like this. Swag. So now Mario has these two states, and he can go from being small to big by colliding with the mushroom. Also, I accidentally reversed the frame so it looks like Mario was running backwards here, but I mean, look at them schmooze. And of course, mushrooms just aren't going to be lying around the mushroom kingdom, you have to get them from question blocks. So I added a bit of code to launch out a mushroom whenever you hit them from below, and even this little animation feels super satisfying to get the power up. And Big Mario really isn't that different from Small Mario, but to keep it true to the original game, you can break brick blocks with your head when you're big, so that's pretty neat. Although, due to the funking duality of man, I now had to make some gooms and coops to act as enemies for Mario. The Goomba was probably the most simple thing I've done so far. All I did was take the mushroom movement code, and instead of making Mario big when he touched it, it would make him small. We also needed a way to kill the Goombas, so Mario constantly checks for enemies underneath him, and if an enemy is found directly below his feet, it'll launch Mario up in the air and kill the enemy. As always, I have to make the death animation just a little bit funny, so I did something similar to my corn game that I did for Ludum Dare a few months ago. And even though it's not exactly like the original Mario, I think it still fits with the goofy art style. Now, the Koopa Troopers were similar, but they did have some differences. Also, maybe don't look at them for too long. 
Instead of killing the Coopers by jumping on them, they actually go back into their shell, and this acts as an entirely different entity. You can jump on the shell to send it flying in either direction, and it'll actually kill other enemies that are in the way as well, and with the animations I think this looks really funny. You can also jump back on the shell to stop it from moving, but this is all quite fiddly and we're just gonna move on. You see, this wonderful turtle man actually has a quite large, wet, squishy brain and won't walk off the sides of blocks like Goombas do. At least the red ones won't, the green ones are kinda dumb. But the way I handled this was that the red Coopers constantly check in front of them for air tiles, and if they realise they're about to fall off the side of a block, they'll just turn around like normal. From a gamer perspective, this doesn't seem like a huge deal, and it probably isn't. But from a game developer perspective, this is actually a really easy way to bring in some variety to your project. And I think all of these little details are what makes Super Mario Bros. so successful and evocative, strangely reminiscent even. Also, look at how ugly this turtle is. This game mechanic also reminded me that Mario can actually kill enemies in more ways than just jumping on their head. And no, I'm not talking about his goofy war crimes. I'm sure you all know that he can hit blocks from underneath to hurt enemies on top of them. So I made it that whenever a block gets hit, it momentarily enables a collider above it. Then the enemies can check whether they're in this collider, and if they are, they'll die. Next, I spent some time modelling out a level to play through with all of these recreated game features. I took some inspiration from the first world of Mario, but I still wanted to make it a bit unique to show off what I was able to put together in this short time frame. Then of course, at the end of the level comes the flagpole and castle. I just had to draw the sprite for Mario real quick and add an animation of him sliding down and then booty sliding into the castle. Boom, we're done. Oh right, I forgot to talk about the pipes. When you press down on top of them, oh look at that, it takes us to the end of the video. Subscribe please or I will mama your mia.